Hola y e buenos dias. Hello and good morning. I am thrilled to be with you all as we celebrate the signing of the Declaración de San Jose. My name is Rex Wild. I use they and them pronouns, and I am the founder of Rex Wild Consulting, where I work with corporations around the world to bolster their TGX or trans and gender expansive inclusion initiatives. I am transgender and non-binary and have been doing LGBTQ inclusion work for over 12 years and have seen the momentous change that can happen for LGBTQ liberation when individuals, organizations, and communities come together to support and uplift this wonderful community. I sit on the TGX initiative, the Transgender and Gender Expansive Initiative for the National LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. Some of you may be unfamiliar with the acronym TGX. A few years ago, I was in a meeting with the National LGBTQ Chamber and the question was posed, with language around identity changing so quickly among the trans and non-binary communities, what should we call an initiative that seeks to serve this community both now and among future generations? I posed the acronym TGX for Transgender and Gender Expansive to acknowledge the evolution of identities that we continue to see from those who expand outside of traditional gender identities. I grew up in Southern California, I'm from Orange County, to my father who was a corporate leader and is a corporate leader in healthcare, and my mom who is a pastor. I had a very traditional and conservative upbringing, one where we did not talk about the existence of LGBTQ folks. And in fact, if LGBTQ folks were ever mentioned, it was in a derogatory or a negative light. It was not until I was well into my 20s that I came out as queer and then non-binary and transgender. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the term non-binary, it means that I don't identify as a man or as a woman, but rather as a third gender. While many folks are new to conversations about transgender and non-binary individuals, the truth is that TGX folks have existed across culture and across history for probably far longer than we even have record of. We have recognized third genders like the Hijra in India, the Fafa Fafin in Samoa, the Bugis in Indonesia, the Mahu in Hawaii, as well as the Muche in Mexico. And that's just to name a few. Now, we are living in a time where companies are becoming increasingly conscious of social justice and corporate social responsibility. From addressing racism to closing the gender pay gap, companies are working to ensure equity at all levels of business. And in this conversation of corporate inclusion, transgender individuals have long been misunderstood. Many people thought that we didn't exist or that being transgender was so uncommon that there was no need to address transgender inclusion at a holistic level. However, over the past decade, we've seen an increasing amount of visibility around LGBTQ people, communities, and issues, especially of those who are transgender and gender expansive. Now in 2015, the estimated population of transgender adults in the US was less than 1%. But more recent research paints an entirely different picture the UCLA Williams Institute did a study where they found that up to 27%, almost a third of youth were identified as either transgender or as gender nonconforming. Other studies show that up to 12% of millennials now identify as transgender, non-binary, or gender expansive. And we know that 56%, over half of Gen Z, knows somebody who goes by gender neutral pronouns like they or them. Through the rise of the internet and representation in media, more individuals have gained access to information about TGX identities leading many more TGX folks to come out and share their authentic identities. However, visibility has come in ways as a double-edged sword. With this increase in visibility, with this increase in individuals coming out in their authentic identities, we've also seen an increase in scrutiny and anti-LGBTQ laws and movements. In the US, we've seen over 500 pieces of anti-LGBTQ and primarily anti-transgender legislation proposed in state legislatures. And this is also happening in many countries around the world. 
These legislative efforts are ill-informed and intentionally discriminatory. They send a message to LGBTQ people that they are not welcomed or valued, and in fact place LGBTQ folks as second-class citizens. As we celebrate Pride this month of June, it feels very complicated for many, of which this is a typically celebratory month within this political climate. And with corporations participating in Pride events worldwide, it's an important moment for companies to look at what is happening to the greater LGBTQ plus community and commit to standing up for their rights, which is why having all of you here is such an important step for LGBTQ equality. Today, we're here to learn the ways in which our organizations can better show up for the greater LGBTQ plus community. We want to ensure that our efforts are in alignment with the needs of this community and that we are taking steps that reflect our value and commitment to the LGBTQ community worldwide. The truth is that we're living in an incredibly complicated world that requires thoughtful solutions. We need to ensure that we are being proactive rather than reactive, and that our actions are not performative, but actually substantive, which means that we need to establish long-term strategies for addressing LGBTQ needs and LGBTQ inclusion. And those strategies must be through a lens of ensuring the inclusion of those who are transgender, non-binary, and gender expansive because we cannot have liberation and inclusion of all of us if we are not including every single one of us. In considering this for our organizations, there are multiple areas that we must look at. And first, what I think about is what we're doing both internally and externally. In discussing this idea of what we're doing externally, first we have to think about some of the ways, for example, that we're responding to anti-LGBTQ legislation. Is your company supporting the sanctuary states that are ensuring the sanctity and the safety of LGBTQ individuals in those states? If you have offices and headquarters in states that are targeting the LGBTQ plus community, what are you doing to support the safety of your employees who work there? There are many of our employees who are in offices in states that are being targeted or in countries where there is targeted legislation against the LGBTQ community. And so companies have a very specific task at hand to ensure the safety, not only of their employees, but also the employees of theirs that have LGBTQ friends, family members, community members, et cetera. In addition, we want to ask how you are responding to things like the news and media and misinformation, et cetera. And so we can see a couple of opportunities that were missed among some of the corporations who participated in Pride this year. For example, with Anheuser-Busch, unfortunately, many of the consumers spoke out after they had a transgender influencer who was used in advertisements for their product. Now, that was a wonderful opportunity for Anheuser-Busch to say, hey, we want to educate all of our consumers about why we are using this transgender influencer and what it means to be transgender, non-binary, or gender expansive, that our product is not just for one type of people, that it is for all people and thus become an opportunity to be a community educator for those who are confused, uncertain, or outraged by the reality of them partnering with someone in the transgender community. Now, when we use an approach like that, when we allow ourselves to take an opportunity that is given to us to support the LGBTQ community and to educate those who are misinformed or don't have a level of understanding around especially the trans, non-binary, and gender expansive community, we actually create, first and foremost, a significant amount of more loyalty to the LGBTQ community, but we also take an important step in history to be an organization and a corporation who is going to make sure that they are actually being active 
in support of the LGBTQ community at large in an impactful, effective, and methodical way. Now, some of the other things that we saw this Pride season where we could have seen additional support externally for the LGBTQ community was with Target, for example. Now, there were so many, not so many, but really a small group of very loud individuals who were looking at Target and some of the products they displayed for Pride season and started misinformation campaigns about what those products were for and who they were even targeted to. And that was such a wonderful opportunity for Target to come out and use that as an educational moment to discuss the reason those products are in the store and to be able to stand up and for the LGBTQ community in a greater way. When the LGBTQ community and its allies see actions like that, we know that organizations are there to support our lives and our livelihood. And that is what we need to see in substantial ways from companies and corporations all around the world. Now, there are other ways that we can use external engagement to support the LGBTQ community. Doing things like supporting LGBTQ-led organizations through donations, but also through our volunteer hours that our organizations lead. We can create mentorship programs so that we can develop LGBTQ leaders within our companies. And so many other ways that we can engage the LGBTQ community externally with our organizations in order to support greater LGBTQ equality. When we shift to talk about the internal things that we can do, I think it's really important that we start from having an understanding of some of the things we see internally that are unsupportive of folks who are LGBTQ, but especially who are trans and gender expansive. A 2021 study from UCLA's Williams Institute found three challenges for TGX folks to be open about their gender identity at work. The first was that one in 10 experienced some form of discrimination at work within the last year. And to be honest, that's probably a pretty conservative estimate. In addition, they found that BIPOC TGX employees were more likely to report verbal harassment due to the compound impacts of both transphobia and racism. And three, that many TGX employees reported engaging in covering behaviors or consciously downplaying their gender history to avoid bullying, harassment, or discrimination on the job. So how do we then address these issues that we see around our TGX employees in our workplaces? Well, that is where we have to look at the differences between policy and culture. Both are important into ensuring a holistically inclusive organization for the greater LGBTQ community, but specifically the TGX community. And while policy helps us set the stage, it doesn't necessarily ensure that bias is being addressed. Whereas culture actually allows us to ensure that the ways that individuals are interacting on an interpersonal and everyday basis are coming from a point of inclusion. One way that we can think about this is while policy is being asked to the dance, culture is actually being asked to dance. Now, when we're talking about this idea of policy, this is going to help us set some procedures and some ways of being that we can communicate our values and what we would like things to happen culturally. And so when we're looking at our policies, we wanna know, are your policies fully inclusive of TGX individuals and making room for non-binary individuals as well. Do your internal forms and HRS systems have room for non-binary people to properly disclose gender? Do your anti-discrimination policies specifically address both gender identity and expression? Do you have transition policies that can be applied across the gender spectrum to binary and non-binary folks alike? The Human Rights Campaign has its Corporate Equality Index, which is an opportunity for organizations to rate themselves and be ranked depending on the LGBTQ inclusiveness of that organization. Now, for those who are scoring 100 on the HRC CEI, what that tells us is you're doing a wonderful job at setting the precedent for LGBTQ inclusion within your workplaces. And that means that you are positioned in a way where you can then 
set the gold standard and go beyond what is just on that corporate equality index, because there is always so much more that we can be doing in order to ensure equity for TGX folks and for the greater LGBTQ community at large. Now, when we're talking about culture, these are the daily ways that we interact with each other. And one of the things that we need to realize is that especially among the TGX community, most people either have not yet met someone who is TGX, at least knowingly, or even if they say they're inclusive of TGX folks, they don't have the cultural knowledge and understanding to ensure that their actions are in alignment with what their values are. And so the ongoing education of employees and deepening the knowledge about the TGX community, inclusive language and cultural best practices is an incredibly important part of this process. We also need to make sure that we have inclusive recruitment programs, that we're actively recruiting from TGX communities, and that we're ensuring that our recruitment efforts in and of themselves are inclusive of TGX folks, whether we do in recruiting internally or from a third party. We also want to make sure that we are helping to advance TGX folks into leadership positions and ensuring equity of non-binary folks as well in historically in programs that are historically meant to serve only men or only women. As well, looking at your products, are the products you provide gender affirming for folks across the gender spectrum? And what are some innovative ways that you're ensuring the inclusion of LGBTQ folks? An example that I love to look at is MasterCard's True Name initiative. And that is an initiative where MasterCard allows the opportunity for individuals to put the name that they go by socially on their credit card, and it does not have to be the same name as what is on their legal identity documents, since that can be in contradiction for many folks who are in the LGBTQ community, especially those who are trans and gender expansive. And so when we see companies and organizations who are embodying these types of innovative solutions to the existence of TGX individuals in their everyday lives, whether that is those who are working within the organization or the communities and the consumers that they serve. In addition, are you tracking diverse spend in your supplier diversity initiatives for LGBTBEs or LGBT business enterprises, but also are you tracking spend specifically for TGX individuals? I can't tell you as I have gone through corporate supplier portals and signed up in order to get my organization registered in their supplier portals, how many times I'm met with the option of only a male or female gender and having to choose rather than being recognized as the non-binary person that I am. Now, in addition to that, we want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of your TGX employee needs. And that means that you're going to need to regularly assess through engagement surveys or provide affinity groups that are anonymous where TGX individuals can meet and have a pipeline to leadership in order to address the specific concerns and needs that TGX folks have within your organization. Now, these are just some of the ways that organizations can take steps towards a more LGBTQ inclusive workplace. Now, research shows that LGBTQ people and their allies are significantly more likely to work for an employer who actively supports the LGBTQ community. We also know that consumers are increasingly more likely to buy products and services from companies that align with their values, especially the LGBTQ plus community and their allies. In fact, a 2020 study from Kearney shows that if the global LGBTQ population or community were a country, it would be the fourth largest economy in the world with over one trillion, that is trillion with a T, of sophisticated purchasing power. This is a powerful community that has much to offer to the corporate world. And as we move into the future, younger generations will continue to challenge the status quo and expect corporations to address issues of equity in a greater way. In closing today, I ask each of you to think about what action you are going to take in order to advance LGBTQ inclusion within your organizations. What can you do to ensure that the actions you are taking are long-term, substantive, 
that the impact for LGBTQ inclusion and communities, both within and out of your organizations are impactful. Thank you so much for your commitment to this community. We need you now more than ever. I am so grateful to have been here with you all today. And I look forward to seeing what next steps you all take toward LGBTQ plus and TGX inclusion in your organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.